Hi, my name is Maud Leger, and I'm on a mission to empower realtors with cutting-edge insights, success stories, and actionable strategies from the top minds in real estate. Welcome back to the Sold Right Away podcast. And in this episode series, we solve real estate marketing challenges in real time. Unlocking modern marketing success for the real estate industry. And that's why today I've brought on Curtis Pimentel. Curtis is a realtor that started in construction, doing some investment in real estate, became a realtor and really hone in on that approach of caring for his clients, having systems in place and keep innovating. Let's get to my chat with Curtis. Hi, Curtis. Thanks for joining us on the episode today. Tell us, how did you arrive to real estate? Thanks, Mo. Thanks for having me here today. Um, yeah, so my journey in real estate is kind of, well, maybe a little different than most people. So I actually started off in, as an investor. So when I was, she was probably 10 years ago, bought my first real estate property. And then it kind of just scaled up from there. Kind of along the ways, I gained a lot of different knowledge and stuff like that. And I just kind of want to pass it on. A lot of people were always messaging me or calling me for advice. And maybe it might be time to put that all that advice to actual work. Nice. I knew the construction renovation work. Was that for your own investment properties or was that for work as well? Uh, both. So I started off in the construction field where it was, geez, probably right out of high school. More or less, and wow. then moved into um, some contracting and electrical. Started running some bigger projects, overlooking those projects while still building my real estate portfolio, getting knowledge, and then eventually getting my license, and then leaving my full time job to basically pursue my true passion. Right, so oh, I love it. So now you have like a background from the ground up, really, literally, to see to help people through the house buying. Yeah, I think it brings a different aspect when you're looking at properties. You know, you know, from your single family homes for your family, make sure everything's safe and stuff like that. And then also for the investor side as well. Yeah, I love it. Very cool. Tell us what was the defining moment then when you became a realtor or as you started transactioning that you said, this is going to be my thing. Uh, I think I always kind of knew it on the back of my head. Maybe the last year or so, I wrote and pushing it more and mm-hmm. trying to step away from my nine to five and Eventually, I was able to make the full switch and really put all my focus into helping my clients. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. What would be one valuable lesson that you learn that you need like, to remind yourself in order to keep being successful? Go slow, follow through. And my big thing is clients I have, we always really kind of make the home feel like ourselves, right? So I really believe in trying to win for them. So... If I'm in Hamilton and there's a problem with a property or if they have a listing, I'm always making sure I'm pushing their listing and stuff like that. So I really try as hard as I can and truly, truly try. So yeah, really build those relationships with the clients. And from there, we've just been able to get repeat clients and people who trust us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that, that kind of answers the next question, but it's a little bit more about what is the key to your success? Would you say that's also how? Yeah, I think that would be the main thing is basically the trust factor. So when we do anything with them, we're like, I'm straight up, no, uh, I don't know the proper word to say it, but no BS, no BS. So when I say something, it's like or not, it's typically my true feeling for the property or what's really going to happen. And most times, pretty much I'm usually bright or very close to it. So, you know, it comes with some hard truths. Some people don't like that. Some people do. And it's kind of how I present it. Yeah. But they'll thank you later, right? If you see a house and you say, it's not a fit for you for this, yeah. this, and that. And then yeah. obviously you have their best interest at, at heart. Well, 100%. So. 100%. Yeah, I love it. What is the most impactful thing that you have implemented in your business that has brought you success? Systems. We have to go with systems. Yeah, so I track, I try to track everything. Properties we have, upcoming properties, locations where I'm delegating my time make sure I'm focusing proper amount of time per property or, you know, I'm just not filling my day with unuseful stuff, stuff like that. Just anything to basically keep momentum and keep providing good service to our clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like instead of running around, not knowing what you're doing, you have systems for everything. Yeah. Yeah. For the follow-ups, we send out emails, we follow up 
your listings, any type of anybody has transactions in that area, like other agents, we actually follow up with them to push our properties as well. Anything, anything like that, anything I can do, anything new ideas to pop in my head that I can implement, I put in a put in a file and I slowly add it into the tracking system. Nice. I love it. This is so cool. What is the one system that you couldn't live without, like of all your systems that you have? So I, I use Excel for most of my stuff. Okay. So I'm going to use Excel. So I have all my spreadsheets. I basically upload all the information there. So that's probably be the main system, but other than that, basically just getting out there. Yeah, getting out there. Getting out there. <laughs> don't be average. Yes, don't be average. Tell us more about that. You know, a lot of people just repeat the same systems that everybody else is doing and expect that they're going to get the same results, right? So you're not going to get the same results as everybody else if you don't put your best foot forward, right? So a lot of these people who are producing and doing a really good job, they didn't start off that way, right? So you had to catch up to them. You had to work harder and think harder and think different ways. The market's always changing and you had to come up with new ideas to you know, stand out. Yeah, totally. Totally true. I love it. Yeah. How do you get more out of real estate for yourself? Business-wise, honestly, a lot of referrals. I think referrals are huge for us. So I actually work, me and my wife work together on well, the whole business side. So referrals are huge for us. I think every single... Pretty much every single client we have, you know, they rave about us. So referrals are huge. And then basically just, you know, our, our names, our signs are all through downtown Hamilton. They're up in Barrie, basically all the same area. We do a lot of work in general areas. So a lot of people see our signs. And then I guess that brings up to the, how do you get more leads? Uh, what lead generating activities that you do that have proven results for you? So we actually have very good relationships with some bigger companies. So if we do also do a lot of leases. So I think that aspect brings in the whole new dynamic because you're looking at these people looking for leases and then they're either coming from, you know, previously owning a home to temporary leasing before they go back and purchase again, or they're stepping, you know, maybe their relationship they've been you know, with their partner for a while and they're looking to move in and then now they're looking to purchase. Yeah. So we're building these relationships with these big companies. We're getting a lot of leases. We're bringing all these people in, and that turns into more future business. I love it because I think a lot of realtors shy away from leases because there's not enough money. But from what I'm hearing, if you have systems in place and you care about these people, then you'll be able to systemize, make the process easier, nurture them, and get business. Yeah, if you can find property for somebody and make the and make that whole transaction smooth and seamless, you're basically showing what you can do before you're doing it. And then if with the follow through, you keep in contact, that one lead, it multiplies. Even if they're not buying, you know, they might, hey, you know, Curtis and Jess are doing a fantastic job for me. My mom's looking for a real estate agent or, you know, they're looking for a place to lease, but they're listing their, their home because something happened, right? Yeah. So yeah. then that adds another layer dynamic that you never thought of. Yeah, I love it. Nice. Very cool. So when you think of your marketing, uh, you talk about signs, you talk about the contract with leases. What is currently working well for you in terms of marketing? Uh, honestly, just activity. Making sure you have a lot of activity coming in. You know, knock on doors, handing out flyers, physically having conversations with people, uh, building relationships. If you have a deal coming through, what else is in there? You know, does he own apartment buildings? Do they own houses? Do they, how else can I add my service to you to make your life easier? And then implement my, my systems and my background into their day-to-day -day projects or properties or whatever. And then building from there, you're basically building a bigger network. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And then the way you even talk about it, it's so systemized. It's perfect. Step by step. What would be one thing that's not working so well that is kind of like your marketing challenge for you at the moment? I think okay. just, you know, follow up time. You know, you have so much stuff on the go, right? So I'm not just making sure you dedicate enough time to where you dedicate it. It's kind of the reason why I try to track it. I think that'll probably be the kind of that situation. Yeah. Just like taking the time to follow up. Yeah. Make sure you actually do it. 
and do it properly. It's all just, you know, quick message or something like that. Like, hey, how's it going? You know, really actually put some care and passion into it. Yeah. yeah. And that's the underlying of everything about your business is care, making sure you do the right, you give the right advice. So when you follow up, you're going to want to show that. How have you tried solving that in terms of time blocking or what have you tried? So I set a schedule every Sunday night for the following week. And then as that week goes on, obviously I'm adding to it. And then I, what I try to do is try to look, you know, 24, 48 hours ahead. And then, you know, see what time I have available, where I kind of delegate. And I, actually what I do is I actually rate, rate everything. You know, five is being urgent, four, three, two, one. And then I make sure I tackle the five stuff first, and then I work the way down. And I try to make sure I clear that list every week. Nice, nice. Okay. So I guess you seem like you have a good system. Well, everything can be better, right? So for now, it seems pretty good. But you know, obviously moving forward and everything in life, there's always yeah. a better way, right? What kind of improvement, I guess, can you apply in terms of that in order to make it easier for you? Is it like either because it's Sunday night or is it because you want more uh, templates of follow-up? Like what would it be? Just less physical interaction with putting the systems in place. So like right now, a lot of stuff is like me physically messaging. And well, I actually like the aspect of physically messaging, but you know, I, I when I put, I input one thing and make sure it all interacts together. So, you know, it changes the dates, it changes the times, it changes, you know, it hops on my calendar. It was something like that probably would be better. Um, to be honest, I'm not really too sure how to do that. But, uh, you know, that's, that takes time, right? So No, that's cool. I love it. Because now with all those systems and procedures we have, access to AI, you can, like, operate and yeah. set all those things up in the CRM or yeah. or just in the in automations for yourself. Uh, so, yeah, that and, like, we also run, obviously, a lot of people do. We do our monthly mail-outs as mm -hmm. well. Um, we get a lot of positive feedback on that. So my wife runs that. Love and it. we're really trying to shy away from this, you know, the all the common stuff, right? Properties for sale, you know, your interest rates be all going to be falling down. So try to shy away from that because everybody just kind of beats that down. And we're really trying to bring in more of the community aspect. So like people can, if they have something for sale, they can advertise it. We have all the events going on in Hamilton, Burlington, you know, even Oakville. Um, nice. You know, recipes, summer ideas, I guess now be winter ideas and fall ideas, but kind of bring a different look than just, you know, here's my real estate. I just sell real estate. We don't. We try to include everybody into it. Yeah. How do you, like, I guess, stand out from other or keep innovating to make sure you're not falling into those? But we, me and my wife have a family, right? We have two kids. So every time we kind of go out, we kind of think, hey, this is a great idea. We'll write it down. Try to bring different stuff, different ideas and content that, you know, not everybody just beats down. You know, how many times do you on Instagram and the same, you know, rate increase or decrease is posted? Like everybody knows it. It's already been posted everywhere, right? So, but they don't know is, you know, there's free event for families over here or a movie night down to Spencer Smith or, you know, some farm is doing some whatever for kids, right? So that's a different way we kind of bring it. A fun, happier kind of like information. Yeah, more of a community. Yeah, and I love that it's you and your wife bouncing ideas, brainstorming together to make sure like you're not just by yourself. I think that's that's a great aspect of working with us. Like, mm. so we you read my background and my my history, and you're getting her background and history as well, right? So you bring two eyes to every deal, um, every property, everything we look at. You know, she when she looks at something, when I look at something, it's totally different, right? So I think it's very nice. Yeah, I love it. This is cool. Nice. Uh, we have a segment for the episode that is called the rapid fire question. Are you ready for that? Sure. Okay. What is your number one business system that you cannot live without? I think it would just be my, like I said before, my business system to track my clients and my time. Yeah. Perfect. What is your best marketing strategy? Um, it's going to be flyers and door knocking. Conversations with people, flyers and door knocking. Nice. Yeah. What is your best social media tactic? <laughs> uh, we, well, so we do a lot of, like I do a lot of posting. 
the stuff like that and stories and kind of show what we're doing, what I do in a day and what she does in a day. I think everything, like everything it can be always be proved, right? So. Yeah. So like you said, what's working right now for you is the tangible. So tangible is working. Yeah. I think that's something that we definitely could work on. It's kind of showing what we do and when we do it and how we do it. But I try to do it in a way that's not just, you know, listing, lease, putting an offer, right? Kind of show yeah. a real human side to things. It's something you could work on and I think agents in general could work on. Yes. Yes, definitely. Nice. What is your top income generating activity? Probably it's releases between getting leases, but then having that, you know, relationship building off of that to basically expand on it. I think that's probably the best. Nice. Nice. I love it. What would be non income generating activity that every realtor should drop? Ooh, I think honestly for me, I had some benches. I think they're, people see it and recognize it, but I think they actually have to for sale for these signs more impact. So spend it, spend the money on having a bench. Once you're, you know, have the money to spend on it, you're gonna have to do it in bulk. Um, just spend the time and actually get clients to build relationships and have those signs out there and then advertise those properties. Yeah, like you said, people see your signs a mm -hmm. lot in certain areas that you do lots yeah. of leases. So that makes sense. Yeah. And and paid purchases, right? Because it always expands. Yeah. Nice. Very true. How do you win more listings? I'm going to go with just basically our approach. You know, the two sets of eyes, the more people working on it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, no, no BS. Um, basically, our, a lot of stuff comes off of references. So we get very, very high referrals. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of that aspect. And when they, once you start working and start interacting with, with us, you kind of you understand where we're coming from. And what we're try really trying to do for you guys. Yeah, I love it because it's the true aspect of human yeah. working together for your clients. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, how do you leverage your listings once you have a lease or a for sale? So if for our, our leases, if we advertise the lease and we do a lot of internal leases, typically double animal, mm -hmm. um, not on purpose, <laughs> but it's the way it kind of happens, is – we will end up pushing. So if one property doesn't work, that's fine. We have all these other properties, right? So I think that's on the lease side. On the sales side, same thing. Like we have properties that are coming available. That we know this time probably doesn't work for you. Well, we have all these other properties. Or for door knocking or whatever. Like we have an open house to over here. Come visit it. We have a couple of properties for sale. We have some other stuff available, you know, coming down the pipelines. Just kind of having, like, honestly, back to conversations. Conversations is the, the biggest thing to have people. And then that brings to um, the next question is, how do you build a strong network? And it seems like you have done that. Yeah, build trust. It's uh, something hard to earn and easy to lose, right? So once you get that trust, you to keep it. Yeah, yeah, very cool. What are key industry resources or books or authors or anything that you do for personal growth and development? So I don't really read too much. I listen to some podcasts and stuff like that, um, more business and investing side. Um, I think the business side of things. I love it. What is a quote or a saying that keeps you motivated? Uh, Kevin O'Leary. So okay. I, think, I think he says, what do you say? Salary is a drug that keeps you away from your dreams. So uh -huh. I think for me, it's a little different than most people, but I think having not depending on something and working towards something is more um, passionate, right? For me, real estate, I'm passionate about real, real estate, pretty much anything about real estate. So yeah. I think you know, working towards something that I actually want to achieve and versus just, you know, some people are comfortable and that's fine. And, I think for me, that's something I really try to build a business. Yeah. I love it. Looking forward to something, not just yeah. expecting money to come in and just yes. keep the same thing over yeah. again. You're yeah. like out there innovating, yeah. make a dream out of it. Love it. What's the best advice you've ever received? Go slow. I know that. I get that a lot. Go slow. You know, really think things through. Don't overdo yourself. Pick the right opportunities. Don't, don't, just buy whatever, whenever. Don't over leverage yourself in terms of even time. 
you know, nurture what you have and build off that nurturing and then put your team together, right? That you need, have your, you know, assistants or whatever tackles, whatever you need to do as mm-hmm. well. And to basically put your time and effort into something. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You're really like going slow in every aspect yeah. from building the system to taking a deal with a client to telling them it's not the right property, like taking it slow yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Smart. Smart. The slow and steady wins the race, right? Yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, everyone has their own definition uh, of success. How do you define success for yourself? On a personal, I probably just see freedom, not from like, a money aspect, but just from a um, time aspect. Yeah, having a time aspect, being able to spend time with the family, go away on vacations, not have to be tied down to something. You are tied down to something, but just having that freedom to be able to to enjoy life, enjoying that success. Do what do what you're actually really passionate about. Really good, yeah. What would be if there was one piece of advice you would leave to all other realtors out there? What would it be? Take your time with your clients. Yeah, full circle. It comes back down to the same thing over and over again. Really, very cool. I love it. Where do we find you? I guess on Instagram, your handle. Best way to reach reach me or my wife is just on Instagram. So you can follow me at Curtis P. Mattel Real Estate. I got a link down there. You can book a call. Um, nice. Give me a DM. Same my, same my wife, Jessica. Um, that or you can check out pmattelhomes.ca website as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for sharing all of this. I think that's super awesome to hear the background, the systems, the way you build your business and the, the way you look at real estate. It's interesting. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Sold Right Away. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you're ready to take your real estate career to the next level, visit us at Sold Right Away for more resources and support. Until next time, keep closing and keep growing.